All right, <clears throat> class, welcome back to English 1301. Let's talk about what's happening here. Uh, welcome back, class. We got some deadlines coming up that I want to go over um, for, once again, for the sections number 11918 and sections number 119. Two, three and one one nine three four these are my Monday and Wednesday Friday classes that meet in class that we've been working with all semester we've had a good semester two class this is going to be due on the 12th so today's the 12th ninth it's going to be due on the 12th of October um, and then so let me tell you my other two classes, and then I'll talk about <coughs> what you're going to be handing in. Excuse me, class. For my online classes, 11901-13855, you're going to turn this in on the 18th. On the 18th. Now, for both classes, for all my classes, you're going to turn in a first draft through Microsoft uh, Word, uh, I mean, through Microsoft, through Blackboard Messages. You're going to turn in a first draft. You're going to turn in a final draft. Please mark them in Blackboard Messages. First draft, final draft, and writing center verification on the profile essay. Okay. And the essay, once again, is going to be 700 to 1,000 words. It's going to be the exact same format as I've been working with you, class. Almost most of my students have that format down by now. Please, once again, go back to the correct essay format. Make sure your essay looks exactly like that. Double spacing, no extra space in between the paragraphs. Times Roman or New Times Roman type. Courier, New Courier type, 12 point. Not triple spacing after the paragraph. Single spacing up in the left-hand corner. Your name, section number, etc. Then you, <clears throat> you center your title. You underline your title and you let the essay go from there. Page 2, right-hand corner, your last name, page 2. Page three, left-hand corner, page three. Class, I've worked with some students this semester that I tell them to make the corrections and then they like rush, make the corrections and send me back the same essay again with the same errors or the same mistakes. And I'm telling students now, take your time, okay? Get it right. If you need to have a friend help you with the format and have them, have them help you. If you need to have somebody who has this stuff down, have them help you. It's simple once you get it. If you need to go to the writing center, have them help you. If you need to go in the computer lab, have them help you. Class, I've read a lot of good portfolios this semester, but get the help. Just don't be rushing stuff back and then send it in to me wrong again. Okay? Likewise, I've had one student this semester, and it's all right. I'm trying to work with him, but I keep telling him the essays need to be 700 to 1,000 words. He keeps sending me back a 1,300-word essay. I'm like, edit it. I'm kind. I don't want to take points off, but I'm not going to grade it. 700 to 1,000 words. That means if it's 1,100 words, I won't grade it. That means it's 1,500 words. I won't grade it. Yesterday, a student sent me an essay that was 2,200 words. I won't grade it. That's 700 to 999 to 1,000 words. So I'm just trying to get my students, it's part of the college experience, to follow directions. All right? And then once you have it, you have it. And so that's why I've got a reputation for working with students to help them, class. Read some good portfolios too this semester. Class combination of grades from once again from A minus to F. 
And when I send those back to you, make sure, class, because when they're graded, they have comments. I've actually read your essays and I've graded your essays. So once again, look over those comments. I had a student the other day wrote a very fine essay, but when she went to pull it up, she couldn't pull it up. So after class, I met with her and I said, get out your laptop. And then she, because I took a bunch of time to grade her essay and I save everybody's essays once I grade them. I save them to a stick drive. What's your name with everything in case something happens because of technology? And this young woman said, Mr. Welsh, your comments aren't pulling up. Your comments aren't pulling up. I said, well, let me see your computer. And her computer was trying to pull up my Microsoft Word document as a Google Doc. And I said, you got to get in there and fix something's wrong with your computer. Because I said, come to my office. We came to my office. I put it in the stick drive. I showed her exactly, once again, pulled it up on my computer, which pulls up a Microsoft Word document through Microsoft Word, and it pulls up. But she said, oh, Mr. Wells, I see what's going on. My computer's trying to pull this document up as a Google Doc. It's not going to work. But then what I did was I printed out a hard copy with all the comments, her grade, and everything. And she said, I'll work to fix that. It was a good essay class, you know. And so get the help that you need. Get the help that you need. So those are the deadlines for turning that in, okay? And like I said, um, I've read some good uh, uh, essays this this semester I had also another um, a, uh, a young woman that wrote to me and said you know she was uh, not complaining about my grading but she said mr. Wells I'm really stunned that you graded my essay she goes you take a lot of time my husband had you last year I had no idea she wrote me in a comment section and that's why you know, I decided to take you because my husband said, take Mr. Welsh. He's going to make you work, but he's going to grade your essays. And she said, I can't believe you graded my essays. And at first she was upset with a couple of my comments. But I said, go through and read those comments. You know, I'm not saying anything just for the hell of it. And she went, wow, you know, Mr. Welsh, what you said was right. You're here to help me. And I said, yeah, you know, and I'm not here to fight anyone. Once again, I've been doing this for decades. I'm here to help students and walking through. And, oh, thank you, Mr. Wells. Thank you. Now I see why my husband suggested that I take you. And I'm like, I'm not looking for any attaboys. I just know what I'm doing. And I've been doing it for, um, for decades, right? And, and once again, that's why I'm paid for, to help my students to actually grade their work. So, so that's what I'm doing. So once again, if you had like once again, class, let's get on. Let's talk about the grading like a, an F or a D on your portfolio. Take your time, class, to look over those comments and see once again what you did. And I'm here to help. I had another student that I was working with, a couple students. I treat every student the same. And this student um, uh, <clears throat> wrote a failing essay is full of basic grammar and sentence structure errors. You know, just full of it. And, and I'm not trying to be mean or anything. You know, I, and I got into correspondence with her, and I, I'm always trying to be helpful. Go, there's possibility that, once again, you need to take another English class. I could lie about this. Skill level wasn't there. You know, didn't even have first grade grammar. Or middle school grammar or sentence structure. Don't beat yourself up. You're in the wrong class. Go back and learn the basics of the language. See Johnny run, period. Mary is happy, period. Johnny is going to the liquor store, period. Simple sentences. And if that's the case, once again... Wherever you are, that's where you are. Don't beat yourself up. Like I told her, I said, I'm just trying to help. You're not, you know, you're not at college level writing. 
or go take another English professor that won't grade your papers. I don't know. Maybe they're out there. But that's what I'm here to help for. And once again, I think for some students occasionally, the best thing you could do is take a class below this. Learn how to write a simple sentence without a grammar error. Learn how to write a simple paragraph that connects sentence to sentence. Then you move on to essays class. It's not being punitive. Once again, you maybe, like I said, once again, maybe you can find another professor who won't grade your essays and just like read them and put A's on them. I can't do that. I have to change students' lives, right? Today I was shopping and then I'm going to move on and a student, uh, I was going to Sprouts on the west side to get some food for my family and a student pulled up in a Ford F-150 diesel pickup trunk ranch edition from the King Ranch. And he jumped out today out of his truck and he said, Mr. Welsh, Mr. Welsh. And I said, hey, what's going on? He goes, do you remember me? I said, yeah, I remember you. He goes, you taught me English 1301. I said, yeah, of course I did. How are you doing? He said, I just want to thank you. You taught me before the pandemic at, at community college, and I'm working IT on the east side, and I'm killing it. And I have to, lie to write a lot of reports, and because of your help, I can do it. I said, wow, man, you know, I wasn't looking for any attaboys. I said, that's fantastic. I said, now, can you tell me about this truck? Where'd you get this King Ranch Ford F-150 diesel pickup truck? He said, oh, Mr. Welsh, I'm heading out to a party today in the desert. I'm going to do some tailgating out there with some friends. I said, you know what? That's fantastic. I said, you just made my day by calling me out in the parking lot and letting me know that I helped you at the community college class. Let's move on. That was just today. It happens on occasion. I can't control those things. Nothing can control what happens in life. That was a good thing that happened today. Class, let's talk about your essays. Let's talk about the memoir. Let's talk about the way that I graded those class. If, if once again, there's some great memoirs, A's to F's class, there were straight A memoirs or A minus memoirs, there were B plus memoirs, there were B memoirs, there were B minus memoirs, there were C plus, C, C minus, D, D minus, D plus, and failing memoirs. Class, if you got a D or an F, look over your essay, scrutinize it. It'll most probably be the most important document you ever received in your college career. Because once again, I took the time to grade it. Look over your errors once again. I had a student one time tell me, oh, Mr. Welsh, the writing center is supposed to do everything for me. No, they're not. No, they're not. The writing center can help you. It always does. It helps my students. Can they give you the entire language? No. No. That's something you got to get on your own. Right? They can't give you the language in one week. Those are things that should have been mastered in grade school, middle school, and high school. Okay? Continuous work within the English language. But that's all right. I needed help when I got to the community college. But once again, the writing center can only do so much. They help, but they can't write your paper for you. And they can't correct if you have non-stop basic first grade grammar errors in your writing, they can't correct all those. That's up for you. Once again, whether you need to go get a full-time tutor or step back and take a class below this to learn the rudiments of English composition. It's all right, class. So look over your essay. See, what, see where you are. And wherever you are, that's where you are. And then you can move out from there. Okay, don't beat yourself up. I had a student yesterday, last week I stopped in the hall. She's a nice student. I liked her a lot. She's coming to class. She wrote a failing first portfolio. And then so I just talked to her. I said, you know, tell me about high school. Oh, Mr. Welsh, I didn't do that good in high school. You know, I had a lot of errors, a lot of grammar problems in high school. 
Uh, sometimes my teachers didn't grade my essays in high school. Sometimes I wrote some failing essays in high school, and I was kind to her. I like her. I said, you know what? That's all over. High school's over. Now it's up to you, you to clean it up and get busy. How hard are you going to have to work? You're going to have to work hard. Are you going to pass English 1301 this time? Most probably not because you don't have the skills. But that's okay. I'll keep working with you. But remember, wherever you are, that's where you are. Go back to see Johnny run, period. Go back to Mary is happy, period. Go back to Javier is going down to the park, period. Class. Simple sentences. She'll be all right. She may have to step back and take English 0310, rudimentary English, like I did in college. Class, to get a refresher. <coughs> Class, there's some great works here. If you received your D and an F, once again, keep working. Go to the Writing Center. lot to do before this next essay is turned in. Read over your pair paper carefully and find out about the mistakes. Okay. You can pull me up once again if you're in a regular class. You know, I talk to students after class once again. Uh, hit me up for the online students. I've been hitting up with students once again. Blackboard messages. Study it. Editing symbols. Class, check and underline the margin once again. Class, so once again, in the margins, I'll highlight something and then put a code in the margin. So... On some of these, you could have WC, WC. That means it's a word choice error. I'm going to define it now. I know what happened. That's I N O what happened was in an essay. So I <coughs> highlighted that and put WC out in the margin. When you pull up, you see it. It's a word choice error. No is spelled K N O W, not N O. So I needed to point that out. And another. Uh, example, there was a student who wrote a sentence that I said, I told Yolanda if we could go. I told Yolanda if we could go. And I highlighted that class. You can't told Yolanda anything. I asked Yolanda or I asked Yolanda if we could go. Class, if you're like speaking with an argot, and that's fine, once again. And then it's once again just keeping working with the language, right? If you if a student is using words incorrectly throughout their whole essay and there's a ton of word choice errors, chances are they're not gonna pass. I had a student about five years ago from Germany. Oh, and she got so angry at me. And I said, you know, I'm just here to help. She was new to the English language. And she was throwing out all these words wrong. I said, you know, don't beat yourself up. You just got to spend more time with English. All right, not German. I like German. I like Spanish too. But this is an English class. And so she just kept working. And I said, yeah, I see her I'd see her charging down the halls with her German English dictionary. Charging. I said, look at her, man. She's hitting it. She's hitting it. She's learning. She's learning. She, she was not able to pass English 13 all that time, but I bet she's passed it now, right? She's new to the language, man. She's out here from Germany. She's doing all right. She learned a lot in my class. She had a long way to go with the English language class. Word choice here. Class, you may have a WM on your paper. That's mean a word missing. When a word is missing from a sentence, it falls apart. And so sometimes with people who are, you know, newer to the English language, they'll forget articles. <coughs> so when an article is missing from a sentence, it falls apart. And you may be able to understand what that person is saying is in an oral situation. But in a written situation, the sentence collapses. I'll give you an app, um, I'll give you an example. Um, he was there. I looked at that sentence uh, in a in a uh, memoir. I'm he was there, so I'm looking at it. I'm he was there. 
in class, there's a word missing. I could tell from the context that what the student wanted to say is, I'm sure he was there. Or I'm positive he was there, but not I'm he was there. It's all right. It was a word missing. If I didn't mark that, that student would never, never learn class. Another uh, in the memoir was another sentence I saw. I'm going to the toilet. A student said in an essay, and I'm like, I, I looked at that one, and I'm like, I'm going the toilet too. I guess. I'm going the toilet. I'm going the toilet. I'm going the toilet. But there was a word missing. I'm going to the toilet. I'm going to the toilet. I'm going the toilet. It's not going to cut it. All right? The word missing, sentence falls apart. Be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Keep working with the language, just as I'm working with the language, right? People say, oh, Mr. Welsh has arrived. Mr. Welsh hasn't arrived anywhere. Anywhere. Mr. Welsh is a student in Espanol, a studente. Este profesor de inglés en español. But I'm a student class. I'm, the, I'm working too. I got to keep engaged in the language. It never ends. I'm going to the toilet. It had to be I'm going to the toilet class. You may have SP on your paper. And that, that means a spelling error. They were not too happy a student had in a sentence. And it was 2-O. And they were not too happy. <coughs> it needs to be T-O-O. Sometimes the spelling checks don't catch that class. And then on some essays, I have one essay that I was grading yesterday that had me spinning, and I'm here to help, class. Past tense, present tense. 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 And so my head was spinning, and I marked every one of them. Because that's a student who doesn't understand or has forgotten some of the concepts of grammar. Class, the rule is, for the rest of your life, when you're writing essays, is you pick one tense and you stay in it. Generally, it's past tense. So all your verbs, everything has to line up in the past tense and you stay with it. I had one student that wrote a great memoir. Everything was in the present tense. But they kept in the present tense. But the switching back and forth, say you had like 20 of those errors, F, I'm going to fail it. Because once again, by me doing that, that's going to let a student know, hey, I need to clean this up. I need to clean this up for me to continue my journey in college, right? We want a journey onward. We want to go to the university, okay? And so we work to clean this just like I did. I had to clean it up at the community college. I had to improve. I had to learn what my mistakes were. So I could clean them up and I still make mistakes. Not as many as I used to as a writer. Tense. Listen to this sentence. I was happy, period. I was happy, period. <coughs> I saw this in the paper. Excuse me. I walk to the park and I see a bird. I walk to the park and I see a bird. That's going from the past tense. I was to the present tense, I walk and I see. Okay. Once again, it sounds, it's off. We don't know what's going on. Why does it sound so funny? It's a grammar error. Intense. It should be, I was happy. I walked to the park, comma, and I saw a bird. Now everything's in the past tense. So look at your tenses. Clean them up, class. Clean them up. Class, an awkward sentence. If I marked a whole sentence awkward, go in there and look at it. Ask yourself, why did Mr. Welsh mark this awkward? 
generally it could be a couple of things. It could be a tense problem. It could be a noun verb agreement problem. It could be those things also with it being a fragment or a run on sentence. Your job is to get in there and pick it apart. If you can't figure it out, get someone who can. Take it back to the writing center. Take it to a parent. Take it to a friend who has this stuff down. And say, look what Mr. Welsh did to my paper. And they'll show you. A couple years ago, I had a woman who was a 50-year-old um, woman who I was teaching. I liked her. She was working hard. Had a lot of errors in her work, man. A lot of errors in her work. She got pissed at me. I said, why would you want to get pissed at me when I'm trying to help you and revolutionize your life? And she said, well, Mr. Walsh, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this essay that you graded and I'm going to take it to my daughter who's a straight A S, uh, student at Coronado. She just graduated and now she's at UT Austin. And I want her to see how you graded my essay. And that student sat down with her mother and said, Listen, Mom, listen to Mr. Welsh. Everything he marked on your paper is dead on. Mr. Welsh is trying to help you. Do not fight that man. Do not fight a man who's trying to help you. And she came back, pulled me outside of class. Mr. Welsh, my daughter at UT Austin, said that I'm, that I'm helping you. And I said, well, of course I'm helping. Why do you think, you know, I marked your paper, you know, and my daughter said that I should, listen, I said, I hope, I said, it's all right, it's not a big deal, I'm just doing my job, they pay me to be an English professor, I could do like a lot of professors do, and just look through your paper and put an A on, not all professors, some do. You can go find that professor for English 1301. Some students told me that happened in high school. I know high school teachers are overwhelmed. Kids put A, 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 A. And then the student comes to my class and they're illiterate. Or they have serious deficiencies. That student. University of Texas at Austin who graduated in Coronado said, Mr. Welsh, great. And I said, and I told her, I said, maybe your daughter can help you. Have your daughter sit down with you because she's the all-star student and have her give you a couple lessons in addition to the writing center. All right? Class. It's good. Tense. Work to fix them up. I still make mistakes. Awkward sentence. Get in there. Why did Mr. Welsh mark this awkward? See if you can figure out. If you can't, get someone to help you. I one time had a student who just every, you know, I mark so many sentences. Grammar, awkward, run on, incomplete, grammar, awkward, incomplete, grammar, awkward, incomplete, F. And then they came to my office and I said, you know, let's sit down. I'll go over this. I'll go over line by line with you. And each sentence, they had no idea what was going on. And I told them, I was kind. I said, you know what? You need to get out of English 1301. You've got no clue about the basics of simple essay writing. I was kind. I went over with her to the counselor. I said, talk to your counselor and see if they can get you in a class where you can learn these basics. Somehow you wound up in my class and you don't know what's going on with just the basics of the English language. So you got to step back. If you can't understand any of this, that means your basic English skills really need help. Take the class below this. Take the class below this and get those skills down. Be good to yourself. You don't have it now. 
It was all right. I helped her out. That's how I helped her. Class. Class. Once again, awkward sentence. Spacing. A double space in class. So look at that. Now, some people, class, if you're, if, when you go, go back to that correct essay format handout. That's what your essays need to look like. I've got students turning in essays with all this triple spacing after each paragraph. Class, once you learn to fix that, you'll know for the rest of your life how to do that. And you need to for writing essays. You don't need triple spacing when you're in double spacing. So how do you fix that? Microsoft Word, page layout, pull down, highlight the essay, double spacing, not 1.5, not triple spacing, double spacing. Click on it. Then there's another pull down. Pull it down. Spacing before paragraphs, zero point. Spacing after paragraph, zero point. Tightens it up. Gets rid of triple spacing. Don't beat yourself up if you don't have that down yet. Get it down. Right? Have someone help you. Go to the writing center. Go to the computer lab. Go to a friend who has this stuff down. Once you have it down, class, you'll have it down. There are things in life I don't have down. When I don't have something down or I need help, I ask people. I need help. Can you help me? And then they'll give me help. I'm one of those type of guys in the old days for GPS and all this stuff. Some men aren't like this. I'm not saying I'm special. If I'm lost somewhere, I let people know I'm lost. I'd pull over on the side of the road growing up and saying, I'm lost. Can you help me? I remember being sometimes on dates with young women and say, well, that's pretty cool. You're a dude who admits you're lost. I said, I've been lost my whole life. I need help. <clears throat> Can you help me? And then I get the help I need. Class, get the help you need. Incomplete sentence. Class, an incomplete sentence, if I have ink sent on your paper, that's simply a sentence that's missed in one or two things. All sentences just need one or two things. Subject, predicate, noun, verb. If it's an incomplete sentence, look at it. Why did Mr. Welsh mark this an incomplete sentence? Complete sentence. Johnny, Johnny's sad, period. Mary's happy, period. Juliana is here, period. Maria is leaving, period. Those are all simple sentences. If you have an incomplete sentence, look at it and ask yourself, why did I make this an incomplete sentence? Can I clean it up? Can I not make the same mistake again, class? And if you do, it's all right, but I'm going to mark it. It's like one time... I think I mentioned this is years ago. I had this one student who could write, but every sentence was a run on sentence. So <clears throat> uh, I marked them run on, 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 F. Right? And I told her, she came to me after class. I said, come see me, you know, after class, we'll talk. And she said, Mr. Welsh, I hate you. And I said, well, now, why do you hate me? This, I'm a college professor. And she says, because you marked all those run-on sentences on my papers. I said, that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to show you how to use a period. And then she confided in me. This is years ago. She said, Mr. Welsh, I don't really... I guess hate you, but you remind me of my father, and I hate my father. My father abandoned the family. And then so I start thinking to myself, whoa, this is a whole other trip. I'm just an English professor, and I was kind to her, and I said, you know what? I'm your English professor, and I'm not your father. I haven't abandoned you. Just work with me to clean up these run-on sentences, and she did. She did, right? She did what she had to, and because she could write. But she had to, you know, clean up a major mistake that kept her from almost not passing the class.
class, the classic, look over, speaking of that, run-on sentences I want to talk about next. Class, if I mark you a run-on sentence, look over, ask it. I had a student in that came to my office the other day, and uh, she said, Mr. Wells, can, I, I said, come, to, come on, we're leaving class, I had time. I said, she, I, I said, let's get out a hard copy. She brought a hard copy of her essay that I had graded. I had graded it, and she printed it out with all my comments on it from her computer and brought it to me. And she got real into it, and she said, Mr. Wells, this one, she knew every error that she made on her essay. It was a good essay. It was clean. A minus essay. But she goes, I don't understand this one run-on sentence that you marked. I said, let's take it apart one at a time. I love doing that. And then I showed her, and she goes, I see what I did wrong. And then she said, Mr. Welsh, could I use the an and and a comma? And I said, yes, I would have made it a conjunct, uh, a compound sentence. You could have done that. She goes, could I also have used a semicolon in there? I said, yes. But the way you had it was a run-on. And she got it, right? Just look at your run-on sentence. The run-on sentence is a sentence that has lost its mind, that's out of control. Your job is to see why this run-on sentence is out of control. Why? Usually it needs to be stopped with a period. It's running on, class. And once you get it, you know, you get it. You keep working. You can be good to yourself, right? Just like me. I got to be good to myself. I make mistakes. Like I shared in class, I've been writing every day, seven days a week. I have been for 35 years on some aspect of writing. And I still take it on the chin. No, we don't want your new book. No, you didn't win the award. No, we don't want to represent you as an agent. No, you didn't get this. No, you didn't get that. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to go on, right? I've published 13 books. I've had my work in 300 publications and anthologies. I've won some pretty heavy writing awards. That still doesn't mean, am I where I exactly want to be? No. Am I somewhere? Yes. Am I hustling? Yes. Am I staying in the game? Yes. Am I working as hard as I ever had? Yes. Am I working on new books? Yes. So if I can work, you can work, right? Because I'm just like you. I'm trying to come up. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to, you know what I mean? So we're all working. I'm just like you. I'm no different. I'm estudente in Espanol. I'm a student trying to come up in this world. Trying to make something of myself, class. I learned those things in college. Run on sentences. Class. Prepositional phrases. If you have long prepositional phrases, please set them off with commas. As a cheerleader, during my senior year at Bowie High School, I was scared of football players. That's as a cheerleader during my senior year at Bowie High School, comma, prepositional phrase. I was scared of football players. Offset those prepositional lead-ins with commas. If you fall in love, comma. You better be careful, period, class. It was, right? Okay, class. So there we are there. There we are there. Exclamation points. Let me give you the rule, my old editor. Gave me Tony Tramfo when I was a daily newspaper reporter <clears throat> in Los Angeles. I was just starting out on a daily in the South Bay of Los Angeles County. I put an exclamation point in a story. My assistant city editor pulled me aside and said, you know what, Welsh, you can get by the rest of your life with ever using an exclamation point again. The words carry their own exclamation now, I'm not a real stickler on that, but I've already had essays this semester. I was happy, exclamation point. I'm going to the movies, three exclamation points. Class, you would never use three exclamation points in a row, never. 
class and you can really get away without ever using one exclamation point again. I was happy carries its own exclamation. Okay. Now, so and in and punctuation, commas go inside, quotation marks. Once again, periods go inside, quotation marks. Be thinking of this for your next essay because your next essay is going to be, once again, quotation driven because the person's words. So go to your writer's reference once again. Look over class. Look over once again those uh, punctuation marks. Now, with that said, class, once again, I've read some good work this semester. We're deep into it. Uh, I'm still, some students are still, once again, adjusting portfolios. If I ask you to some, make some changes, make those changes, once again, but make sure you take your time, class, and do it right as best as you can. I'm not here, once again, to beat anyone up. I'm here to help students. Sometimes students, oh my God, I got to, they rush and they send it back to me again. And it's still full of errors. If I tell you to go back and look at the correct essay format handout of that essay I sent you, scrutinize that as best as you can. And then if you don't get it the first time, I'll help you. If you don't get it the second time, I'll help you. If you don't get it the third time, I'll help you. Like that student who kept sending me a 1,300 word uh, essay. Send it two or three times. I've told him each time. 700 to 1,000 words. I'm here to help. Well, Mr. Wells, aren't you going to grade it now? No. No. You need to edit it. I've got 140 students this semester. I'm not reading a 1,300-word essay. That's not what I'm asking for. You go back and edit it, and when you give it to me, you send it to me, and it's 800 words, I'll grade it. It's 1,000 words, I'll grade it. It's 999 words, I'll grade it. It's 700 words, I'll grade it. I'm not grading a 1,300-word essay, but I'm giving the student time to fix it. Then once he sends it back, it's all ready to go, I'll dig in there once again, and I'll hit it. Class, once again, a lot of good work being done this semester. I think you're learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. I know that. I've read some good memoirs. I'm looking forward to these profiles coming up. Class, good luck as you go to make these deadlines and know that I'm here for you. Um, I hope this helps. I'll leave you as the Irish always say, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. The weather the past couple of days have reminded me of Ireland, the old sod. I like when it rains. I'm glad it doesn't rain all the time or as much as it does in Ireland because I couldn't hand that, handle that much rain. But, you know, when it does, at times it reminds me of the old sod, the place of my ancestors. You keep that in mind with Halloween coming up because always remember this class, the Irish brought Halloween to America. That's our thing, Sam Hain, right? The Celtic holiday of Sam Hain, Halloween, brought over from the Irish. That said, I always, uh, I always participate in Dia de los Muertos, right? All those things. Love it, love it, love it. Class, be good to yourself. Good luck, good luck, good luck. We'll see you next time, and good luck as you continue your journey in English 1301.